This film is brought to you by 4-H, America's largest youth development organization. In collaboration with Montana State University and Terrapod. Made possible by a grant from Toyota. Now that I knew how precious water was, I was gonna try to use a little less. But I still don't understand what happens to water after it goes down the drain. So after a little more research, my dad and I headed downstream. Back to that river I never even knew ran through the city. What about your city? Does your town have a river running through it that you never knew about? We came to a spot in the river where all of this clean water was coming out of a pipe. Hey, do you know how much water it takes to make that cup of coffee? Oh, I'd say about 30 gallons. How'd you know? I know quite a little bit about water. I work at a water treatment plant. I've been there. The one with Rick? No, actually the one I work at is a little bit different. Where is all this clean water coming from? I think you'll be surprised. Hi, I'm Tom. I'm the superintendent of the city's wastewater treatment plant. We take ugly wastewater that looks like this and we run it through treatment systems like this settling tank and through biological treatment systems. Aeration tanks like this one are really the heart of any wastewater treatment plant. The next stage of treatment includes final clarifiers like the one we're standing in front of right here. The last stage of treatment is chlorination. We use chlorine to disinfect the plant effluent, and then once it's fully treated and purified, we discharge it to the receiving stream. The whole process of moving a gallon of water through the plant takes anywhere from 16 to 20 hours. That's a lot of treatment, and we produce a really nice, high-quality treated water that can be safely discharged back into the environment. So I flush stuff down the toilet, and it ends up here? Yep, right here. But it's so clean. We work hard to treat it and purify it. Is it safe to drink? Almost. You have to remember that any water taken from a stream is going to require additional treatment before it would be totally safe to drink. Right. I was up at the plant that purifies the water yesterday. That makes sense, but why don't you put the dirty water somewhere else instead of back into the stream? That treated water has to go somewhere. Fish need clean water. Wildlife needs clean water. But there's another important reason also why we treat this water. Downstream from us, there are dozens of other cities. And those cities are going to take that water, draw water out of this same river, and use it for their drinking water supply. Really? Those other cities are going to treat that water and purify it again, but that water is still eventually going to end up in someone else's drinking glass. Seriously. That's really cool. There was something the farmer said that I kept thinking about. I don't even want to guess how much water it'd take to make your camera there. I don't know where any camera factories are, but my dad knew some people at a car factory a little further downstream. Hi, my name's Dawn, and I'm an environmental engineer here at this automobile plant. Hi, my name's Roger, and I also work in one of the engineering departments here in the manufacturing plant. Don and Roger were there with a group of 4-H kids training them how to test the wastewater from the factory to make sure it's clean enough to go back into the river. Why do factories like this one The 4-H'ers had some of the same questions that I did. I have a question about the pond. Why does it take so much water to make cars? It does generally take a lot of water to manufacture things. We know that water's not free, so we want to reduce water as much as possible and then recycle and reuse it if we can. Not only has reducing our water usage saved us millions of dollars, but it's also just good to do for the environment as good environmental stewards. It takes approximately six to seven hundred gallons per vehicle to when the finished car goes off the line. You know, mainly it's from our painting processes, you know, heating and cooling the buildings. Not only does it take the water that we use here in the manufacturing of cars, but also in the raw materials that goes into the car. We send every vehicle through a water test booth that checks for leaks in the vehicles to make sure they're 
leak free. We reuse that water again and again and again. Yes, it does take a lot of water to make cars, and we are concerned about the quality of the water when it leaves our plant. We want to make sure that we release good quality water so that downstream it'll have a, a positive impact rather than a negative impact on our environment. I grew up on a lake and so I did a lot of boating and swimming and hiking so knowing how much I enjoy being outdoors and, and being on the water it was important to me to do something about it as an adult so being an environmental engineer was the perfect way to ensure that I was still involved in the environment and helping to keep it clean. I like meeting all these people who cared about water and who were as into it as I was. I even met some 4-H's my age who are doing some pretty cool stuff with water. My name is Cynthia. I'm Diego. My name is Amelia. I'm Anna. The 4-H camp was working on a project to protect a pond. The pond looked kind of gross, but it was really full of life. I like helping out this pond because I love frogs. In fact, I couldn't believe how much life depended on this little pond. This is awesome. Okay, my name's Isaiah and I like helping out this pond because it's not just an empty pond. Many amphibian type creatures live here. My name's Ryan and every year we do this habitat restoration program uh, and the whole idea behind it is that we leave the camp and the environment better than when we found it. We do some project during the week, you know, a couple hours a day with all our campers and, and get them involved and them invested in uh, you know, taking care of the environment around us. It's too bad we couldn't keep going, because I wondered about all the other places downstream. I know this river keeps going a long way, but it made me feel good that everywhere I looked, I met people who were actually doing stuff to make water and the environment healthier. Even my dad was pitching in. It made me want to do something too. So, when I got home, I did. What about you? What are you going to do? This film is brought to you by 4-H, America's largest youth development organization. In collaboration with Montana State University and Terrapod. Made possible by a grant from Toyota.